In this video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on what to do if your yard has multiple grass types, or maybe you're in the lawn care business and you're taking care of properties that have more than one grass type. What do we do in that situation? I'm gonna tell you in this video. Now, let me be honest. When I pull up on a yard in my area, I typically am hoping to find one grass type. I'm in the Birmingham, Alabama area, and we have Bermuda primarily, but we also have Zoysia, Centipede, St. Augustine. Uh, as well and so sometimes you find a yard that has multiple grass types and even from a mowing standpoint that can be a little challenging but from a weed control and fertilization standpoint it even presents bigger challenges so I'm on a yard today and I want to show you around the yard and then just talk to you about the strategy that we're going to use from both the mowing standpoint and also uh, from a weed control and fertilization standpoint all right, when I pull up on a yard like this, I want to ask myself some diagnostic questions. I'm taking a look at the yard, and I want to first understand what is the primary grass type that we're dealing with here. So if I was to stand back and look at this yard, I see two primary grass types in this front yard. It's centipede and Bermuda. And just looking at it, and the grass is, is turning because of uh, being fall, it's losing its green color, but it's easy to tell the centipede from the Bermuda. And looking at it, it looks to me, I would estimate about 60% centipede, about 40% Bermuda. So you can show you here the, what the centipede looks like. And if I get over here, there's Bermuda grass mixed in with it. So if this yard was like 90% one grass type and 10% the other, then I'm definitely trying to knock out that 10% and make it one uniform grass type. Even if you have to just kill it and resize that area, whatever you need to do to get rid of that area. But when it's almost 50-50, in this case, I estimated 60-40 split, then that becomes a little bit more challenging. And because of the centipede grass being the primary type here, uh, I'm left in a, a little bit of a difficult situation. So I asked myself in this situation, what happens if we do nothing to the lawns? Which grass type is gonna take over? Well, in my experience, when you have a Bermuda and centipede lawn side by side, typically the centipede yard ends up creeping over into Bermuda as opposed to vice versa. So it might be possible to convert this yard either way to fully centipede or fully Bermuda, but both can be challenging. So in this situation, if I was gonna convert this yard over Bermuda, what I would most likely do is wait until the winter time when the Bermuda goes dormant. And hopefully on a warm day, there'll be enough green in the centipede that I could spray it with glyphosate and be able to really put a lot of pressure on the centipede grass and hopefully kill some of it and then let the Bermuda grass fill in. Now, that's not a perfect solution. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds to kill the centipede grass like that, um, but it would probably beat it up and over time, hopefully the Bermuda would start filling in. But the problem is if you don't kill the centipede off, like I mentioned before, oftentimes uh, it will end up getting larger and larger patch of centipede that continues to spread back and you're, you're sort of fighting a battle there. Now for the Bermuda grass, it's gonna be very difficult for me to kill the Bermuda but again, over time, hopefully the centipede is going to keep spreading and uh, making this yard look more like a uniform centipede yard. Now, what I have to decide from a weed control and fertilization standpoint is which grass site is more susceptible to herbicide damage. And so in this situation, it's the centipede grass. So there's some products that I could spray on Bermuda grass that would damage the centipede grass. So I don't think I'll be able to use those. For instance, I'm spraying in the fall uh, recently and I'm using spectacle flow on both Bermuda and centipede but I use a lower rate on the centipede well I'm putting 2,4-D in there on my Bermuda yards but I'm leaving the 2,4-D out on the centipede so in this situation I'm not going to run around spraying a mix with 2,4-D on all the little Bermuda patches and then go back and spray a mix that doesn't have 2,4-D on the centipede patches I've just got a mix that doesn't have the 2,4-D in it and I'm going to spray the whole yard so I might not get quite as good a weed control in the Bermuda grass, but I'm doing so in a way that hopefully is not gonna harm either grass type. Again, if it was 10% of, of centipede and the rest Bermuda, then I would be fine spraying something that's labeled for Bermuda and not labeled for centipede because at that point, the centipede's basically a weed. I'm trying to get rid of the centipede. I wanna beat the centipede up so that the Bermuda can keep taking over. But when you got a yard that's almost 50% one type grass and 50% another, then you don't want to beat up one grass and uh, make the uh, make the whole yard look terrible. At the same time, again, you don't want to just run around spraying all these little random patches of Bermuda and then go back and spray the random patches 
of centipedes. You need a mixture that's going to be safe on both grass types. Now, if it's a completely different situation, let's say that the front yard is totally Bermuda and the backyard is totally St. Augustine. Well then, yes, I'm going to have two different mixes and basically treating it like two different yards. I'm going to spray a Bermuda mix on the Bermuda, switch over my split tank on my Graham unit, and, and then I'm going to go spray the backyard uh, with a St. Augustine mix that's not going to damage that grass. And that's okay too. That's not a big deal. Now another thing that can be challenging in a yard like this is if you've got some tough weeds. So for instance, here's some Dallas grass and this looks like it's mostly in a little patch of Bermuda, but there's also some Dallas grass in here that I saw that's primarily in the centipede grass. And there's going to be some difficult weeds like that that are hard to control in a centipede lawn. And so that might be a situation where you have to talk to the customer about that. And to be honest with you, if it's a yard that's just covered in difficult weeds and multiple grass types, it may be one that you don't want to take on as a business owner and as a homeowner, just know that you got your work cut out for you. So let's take a look at the backyard on this particular lawn. And even as we get closer to the backyard, again, we're uh, going into a different grass type. So we've moved into the back and I've already seen this yard, so I know what the answer is before I show it to you. But as you get to the back, you got what? St. Augustine. So, and if there's some Bermuda mixed in with the St. Augustine, okay? You can see here this Bermuda uh, grass right there. It's got a lot of crab grass in it and stuff like that. But this is primarily a St. Augustine yard uh, with some patches of Bermuda. So similar situation. I'm not gonna come back here and hammer this yard with some stuff that would be fine with the Bermuda, but damage the St. Augustine. I'm gonna spray it with something that the St. Augustine would tolerate. And if the St. Augustine would tolerate it, then the Bermuda most likely will also tolerate it. Again, I don't have a magic formula how to get this little bit of Bermuda out of the St. Augustine, but I don't wanna just beat the St. Augustine up and make the whole yard look terrible for the sake of a little bit of Bermuda grass. And if that means the little bit of Bermuda has more weeds than it would if it was a solid Bermuda grass where I could use different products, then that's okay. That's better than just causing a big mess on your St. Augustine for the sake of a little bit better weed control on your Bermuda. And this situation too, I think is great as far as the mowing to make a point. For instance, the centipede in the front yard, I mean, you can mow it at an inch, inch and a half, um, but this St. Augustine typically likes to be mowed a little bit higher. You know, might mow it even four or five inches tall. So you have a yard like this, again, if it's just mostly St. Augustine in the back, then I'm just gonna cut this high and the Bermuda, which could tolerate being mowed short, it's just gonna have to adapt. I'm not gonna drop my mower down and just cut a few little patches of Bermuda short and cut the rest of it at four and five inches. Yeah, same situation in the front yards. I go back here, I mean, yeah, I could, some people like their Bermuda grass to, to be tall and wanna cut three or four inches. Well, that's not really ideal for the centipede. So in this situation, you know, I can cut this centipede an inch and a half and the Bermuda would be fine at that too. So you just gotta kinda of pick out a height. It, it just looks weird in this situation to, to cut one grass type one height and another the other height. Again, if it was just fully in backyard one grass type and fully front yard another grass type, then you can do that. But when they're mixed in together, you gotta just kind of find a happy medium and go with it. Now, like I alluded to, from a weed control and fertilization standpoint, a split tank like this comes in very handy. So when you have a split rig, the way it works for me, the way a lot of times I'll do, I'll mix my Bermuda zoysia mix on this side, on the larger side of the tank. On the smaller side, I'll mix the Centipede St. Augustine mix. And you can see those two little valves right there and that third valve. When I have them two flipped up like that, it pulls from the small side. When I have the all three flipped down, it'll pull from the large side. So what I end up doing is I'll put just a little bit of dye in this side, a blue dye, just enough to tint the water. And I'll spray on Centipede or St. Augustine yard, I'll be spraying with this blue dye. And if I get to a, a Bermuda or Zoysia yard, I can flip those valves down, spray it back into the tank. And then when it's not blue anymore, I know that now I'm back on the Bermuda Zoysia mix. So, the split tank's really handy for stuff like that, and uh, that's pretty much how it works for me. So again, you can make this work however you want to. You can try to kill off the grass type that's, that's the minimal grass type in your yard and let the dominant one take over, or if there's a lot of grass of both types, then you may have to live with both types and just find herbicides that'll be tolerated by both grass types. 
Either way is fine. Even in a 50-50 yard, you can kill off the one. It just may take a lot more time and effort and time to recover. Again, this is a whole different conversation in a sense. Not really, but uh, if, you, if you had warm season grass and, and cool season grass mixed together, then you're going to have an even bigger challenge in finding herbicides that are going to be compatible with both. And from a mowing standpoint, all, there's just a lot of issues with that. So that would be a very, very big challenge. If you're thinking about getting into weed control and fertilization, then I have some resources at LawnCareLife.com. It's actually com coming out with some new resources I'm pretty excited about. I haven't launched them yet, but I've got a, a brand new pricing chart structure that I'm coming up with. I think it's going to be one of the things I'm, I'm most excited about. I also have the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy, which is a lot of video training for those that are looking possibly to get into the weed control and fertilization business. If you hadn't signed up for the Equip Expo, at the time I'm filming this, it's next week, uh, but you still get half off using the code Lawn Care Life. That's all one word. When you register for the Equip Expo in Louisville, Kentucky, put Lawn Care Life in, you'll get half off. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. thumbs up, like, and commenting, and I will see you guys in the next video. Hello, lawn care business owner. Yeah. Oh yeah, you want me to drive 35 minutes out there to give you a quote? Sure, I'll give you a quote. I'll tell you what let's do. Let me drive out there to give you a quote, drive back home, email you the quote. If you agree on the quote, then I'll drive back out there, me and three helpers tomorrow, and we'll go ahead and do the yard. Does that sound great? All right, headed that way right now. Oh man, this yard owns nothing. I mean, this is like a tiny yard like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote him $35. Yeah, I just sent over your quote. $35. That yard won't take us no time. We'll be in and out of there in 15 minutes. It's a deal? Yes! Hey guys, we got the yard. Let's all load up. We got a 35 minute drive to go work for 15 minutes and make $35. And by the time we pay all our overhead, we're actually running the deficit, losing money. Oh man, 11 o'clock. I guess I got to get going. Self-employed, got to get out there and make it happen. Got four yards today. Woo, done by 1.30. Running my own business, living the dream. Hey guys, we got five yards today. We got those three townhouses, then we got the one that's 4,000 square feet, and then we got that little one that's like 800 square feet. Go ahead, get the 72 inch rider, give me a 60 inch stand on, get the 36 inch walk behind just in case we need it. Go ahead and grab both the commercial 21s and get six trimmers and four backpack blowers. I don't want anything to happen that could go wrong that could keep us from being success out there today. And yes, we need all five of us going out there to knock out these five lawns. Hello, it better be hello, because if the money ain't there, it's going to be goodbye. Oh, yeah. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. All right, guys, fire up the mower. We got the money. Just picked up a lady that wants her yard bag. Guess I'm going out there to buy me a $12,000 bag and mower. Yes. We're going to definitely need to mow this today. Yeah, I realize it's the dead of winter and it hadn't grown in two months. But we got to keep it rolling. We're mowing it again. Let's go, guys. Crank up the mowers. Hey, guys, I'm ready. I got my gas station pizza and four energy drinks to get me through the nutritious day. And lunch, we're going to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Taking care of my body. Body runs on high-octane fuel. Hey, how'd you come out on your taxes this year? Came out fine. Again, you hadn't paid any taxes in 20 years. Oh boy. Oh boy, we don't know each other. Six inch fescue, cut it on number two. 
two inch Bermuda, cut it on number two. One inch centipede, cut it on number two. Wait a minute. Well, number two actually be cutting grass in that situation. Ah, uh, who cares? Cut it on number two. Yes, I know I spent $4,000 in repair last year on that 23 year old zero turn, but I'm hoping I can get one more year out of it. Yes, I've racked up about $1,500 keeping that string trimmer running, but they just don't make them like that anymore. Sure, my backpack blower's fallen off the truck about four times, and the last time on the interstate got hit by a Mack truck, but it still cranks on about the 15th pull. And yes, occasionally the fire department gets called on me because it's smoking so bad, but that's a misunderstanding, and that's their problem. It's not mine. That thing still runs great. These mower shops are trying to take my money, and I'm not going to let them. Did you see the latest video Lawn Care Life did about stereotypes? What? You were working? What in the world? Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that video. Did you see the Spencer's video? Did you see Brian's video? Did you see those guys mowing tall grass? Can you believe how they got through that? Oh, Lawn Care Nut, absolutely, I don't miss a video. My YouTube addiction may be cutting into my business just a little bit, but we all gotta be entertained. Weather Channel said 7% chance of rain. Guess we gotta call it off today. Try again tomorrow. Gutter cleaning? Absolutely. Firewood? We're the best in town. Hey guys, we gotta get some trees on the ground so we can split up some firewood. Irrigation repair? Well, they used to call me Rainbird back in high school. Pet sitting? Oh yes, we give 5% of our profits to the Humane Society every year. So let me get this straight. You got 10 yards, no fences, no landscaping, all under 2,000 square feet, and you wanted me to mow them for $65 a piece? I told you this one time, and I'm gonna tell it to you again. Are you listening? We don't drop the tailgate for less than $75. $75 minimum, that's it. Monday, working. Tuesday, working. Wednesday, working. Thursday, we working. Friday, I'm working. Saturday, working. And Sunday, I'm working plus making up for what I didn't get done the rest of the week and then working some more. What's that? I can't hear you. Oh, my eye out. Well, if I do, I'll just dress up as a pirate for Christmas and wear an eye patch. Now get back to work before I send you down to Davy Jones' locker. Hey Phil, did you change the oil back in 2017 like I asked you to? Eleven point nine PSI. Tenth of a pound off. Get my air compressor ready. And bring me one quarter of an ounce of engine oil. 99.8 hours. Looks like we're gonna have to stop on the second yard of the day to change the oil. Hey guys, get the three sets of brand new blades out because I want to change the blades every third yard, just like I've told y'all. Gas, surcharge. Dog poop in the yard, surcharge. Didn't text me back, surcharge. Usually leaves me a tip, but didn't this time. Surcharge. Want to have a conversation with me, surcharge. Called me on the weekend, definitely surcharge. Late payment, surcharge. More than one dog in the yard, surcharge. Lawn on more than a 15% incline, definitely a surcharge. No clear defined border around the landscaping beds, definitely another surcharge. Ask us to come on Friday, that's a surcharge. Too old, surcharge. Ask if I would mind push mowing the backyard, triple surcharge. <laughs> <laughs>